Member and greetings to everyone as we've all come here together to worship God on the Sabbath day which he ordained and created for man. Interesting that it was a, a, a special uh, thing that God created uh, from the time of Adam and Eve, but there it, it appears that it was created at that time and created for us. And so we're here keeping that Sabbath day holy as God commanded it to be kept holy. And so even now we're approaching the season of the year, which is uh, kind of the culmination of God's plan. As we approach the fall holy day season, every one of the holy days which we keep we are ordained to, uh, due to our calling, we are, or we are ordained to certain positions which God has given us and responsibilities which go along with that um, calling and choosing from God. Have you ever thought of yourself as a prophet? or as a witness. You are both prophets and witnesses, and uh, we are called that uh, in the Bible. I'd like to read to you here in the introduction to this sermonette. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And this is much broader than just the, um, the thing that I'm talking about here because it talks about all of our responsibility as the people who help to make the church function. And every one of us is involved in that. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, starting in verse 27. You are the body of Christ. You are the body of Christ. Christ uh, resides in you, it says in the allegory that's being talked about here. And members, you are the body of Christ and members in particular. He's saying that to the church in Corinth, which wasn't the ideal church, at least as far as um, problems that went, that went on in the, uh, in the different churches. And God has sent some, has set some in the church. He gave them different responsibilities. He sent some as apostles. We all might think about, uh, you know, in the days gone by. And uh, everybody may not be familiar with that. But Herbert Armstrong, we regard it as an apostle. Secondly, prophets. Um, it says that some are prophets. Well, I'm going to go a little bit further than Paul did here. I'm going to say that we all are prophets in one way or another, and I'll be talking about how it is that you are a prophet. Thirdly, teachers, and um, that's partly already being fulfilled, but in the coming of the kingdom, when Christ returns and establishes his government on earth, then we will all be in the responsibility of being teachers. After that, miracles. Uh, uh, those of us who are called to do miracles. And I would say this as, as well, that... Um, the entire church will be involved in miracles at the time that uh, we are in the fullness of God's kingdom. Then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. A wide set of responsibilities. Of course, that's not all. We have responsibilities as well in making this church function right now and doing the things that are necessary in order to be able to hold a church and uh, make everything functional. 
have all the and and you don't have every gift. It says here, have all the gifts of healing. Mm, probably not. You do all speak with tongues? No. Do all interpret? No. But he says, covet the, covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet I show you a more excellent way. And he goes on from there, but that's as far as I have uh, carried it from here. That it, it talks about you being prophets, uh, and you prophesy. And I'm going to suggest to you that you don't just prophesy in what you say by word of mouth, but you also prophesy by your behavior, especially as Today, you're here prophesying about the coming of God's kingdom because the Sabbath day represents the coming of God's kingdom. And you are performing a maybe fairly small witness in the Buffalo area to the fact that ultimately God's kingdom is coming. As you keep this day, you are uh, paying Tribute to the coming of God's kingdom because the Sabbath day is a symbol of the coming of God's kingdom. It's one of the reasons God commanded us to keep it and he also commanded us to keep the holy days. So uh, uh, that question just goes along with what I said. Have you ever thought of yourself either as a prophet or as a witness? What I want to do in this sermonette is to show you that we, that as we go to keep the feast, we are being both prophets and also witnesses of God's coming kingdom. Here's what Paul said in the book of Colossians to the church in Colossae. Colossians chapter 2, verses 16 and 17. Paul says, do not let any man judge you, because this is what was going on in the church in Colossae. There, were be, there, was, a, there was a disagreement uh, between the Colossians and um, those, well, the two different factions in the church in, in Colossae. Uh, and, and this disagreement had to do with both eating and drinking, especially on the Sabbath day because they were keeping the Sabbath day the wrong way by, um, by not um, eating or drinking and teaching the congregation that you must fast on the Sabbath day. So they said, don't let anybody judge you because you're not fasting on the Sabbath day. The Sabbath day is a symbol of the coming of God's kingdom, and it is a time of abundance. It should be picturing abundance and not uh, deprivation, as you would be looking at, uh, at the fact that you would be fasting on the Sabbath day or fasting on a holy day. Don't let any man judge you because you didn't participate in the fast, because you ate and drank on the Sabbath day or on the holy day or on the new moon or on the Sabbath days because these things are a shadow of things to come. But let, it says here, but the body is of Christ. That's in the old King James. That is not a, that is not a correct translation It says, which are a shadow of things to come. But this ties back to the first part of that sentence in verse 16. Don't let any man judge you, but let the body of Christ be your judge. That's who should judge you about whether or not you are to fast uh, on the Sabbath day, the holy days, or those days that are mentioned above. Now, a shadow, he says, it's a, when we do this, we are participating as a part of the shadow. 
Now, I don't have a good light here in front of me, but if I had a light in front of me or behind me, I would be casting a shadow. And supposedly, since the shadow would be created by the form of my body, then that would be uh, casting a, a meaningful shadow, a shadow which has a form and, and shows us something. Well, when, whenever we keep the holy days, whenever we keep the weekly Sabbath, we are participating as a part of that shadow, and the body which is keeping it is performing that witness. So that's what it, that's what it means here in, in Colossians 2, verses 16 and 17. We are a part of that shadow. To the extent that we are a part of that shadow, we cast that shadow, we are prophesying about what is coming. You know, when we go to the Feast of Tabernacles, we're prophesying that the Feast of Tabernacles is going to be a future time of abundance and great happiness. We are to be uh, participating by eating very well and being very happy about the coming of God's kingdom. So we're, we're, our, our behavior is a form of prophesying as we keep that. So the shadow is in the image of the body that's casting that shadow. We all together are casting that shadow for all people on the face of the earth to even see it today, though they do not yet recognize what they're looking at. They will look back in the future and understand the shadow that you participated in providing for them. We are, we are prophesying as we keep the Feast of Tabernacles. We are prophesying as we keep the, the Day of Trumpets and the Day of Atonement. We are prophesying about what? Day of Trumpets, we are prophesying by observing it and the way that we observe it, we are prophesying about the fact that Jesus Christ is going to return to the earth and he will establish his kingdom and his government. You're, pro you're prophets in that, in that way, through your behavior. Even if you don't stand up and, and uh, preach to the people, as you apparently will, whenever the kingdom of God comes in its fullness, whenever Jesus Christ actually has returned here to the earth, you will verbally, you will give verbal um, prophecy to all of, the man, all of mankind, and you, you have a certain responsibility that you'll be given. We prophesy of the real thing which is to come through our behavior, and ultimately we will through the words that we speak to people all over the face of the earth. We also witness and we are called to be witnesses. You know, after after the day of after the day of trumpets, we're gonna we're going to uh, all prophesy about the ultimate fate of Satan the devil by keeping the Day of Atonement. What does that represent? Prophetically, we are then we are then not eating, but we are we are looking forward to the end of Satan the devil's reign here on the face of the earth. And that is a form of prophecy as well, in and we keep that in our behavior. And ultimately we will see that come to pass. God has also given us the opportunity to witness, and this is not necessarily an easy job, but it is a job that needs to, needs to be done, and God has, 
has ordained that it will be done. Matthew 24, verse 14. Very familiar verse, I hope, to everyone here. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness to all nations. And when that's been done, the end shall come. And the implication there by reading that is that the end will not come until that's been done. To, to what extent God expects that to be carried out before the end of the age and the return of Jesus Christ and the establishment of his kingdom on the earth, um, that's his judgment. We don't really know. Uh, but we know that it tells us that, that it will be preached and all the world for a witness to all nations. And I don't think there's any way that we can imagine that that has happened yet. And so we've got some more things to go through before the end of this age, if I read that. But by, by witnessing and by our behavior, we witness that God's kingdom is coming. So it says, some are prophets. I say, all of us in keeping the Sabbath day of God and the holy days of God, which are also Sabbath days, we are prophesying and we are all prophets. When we go up to keep the Feast of Taber uh, Tabernacles, we are being prophetic witnesses. And a woman in Tartu, one of the first years that we were going to Estonia, we started in, in uh, 1997 going, and we went every year uh, with a few exceptions from that time until we're going back this year. We last missed the last two years because of the COVID, but we're going back this year to keep the Feast of Tabernacles there. This woman in Tartu was very dedicated to helping people, and we invited her as a prospective member to come to uh, one of the day, one of the holy days there. My, must have been the Feast of Tabernacles, uh, and we we had a great spread for everybody, and and everybody was uh, reserving and living in hotel rooms, and, and so she asked, why were we doing that? Why are you doing that? It's a, I said, well, it's because we are taking our instructions from what God says in the Bible. Why would you do that? She was very um, offended by the fact that we would spend so much money keeping the Feast of Tabernacles, when so many people on the face of the earth had need for that money. She didn't stay with us very long. So we do it because God says to do it. And God knows that we, he wants us to be prophesying in keeping those days and in the way he commanded them to be kept so that we are in obedience to him and so that the world has a witness about the end of the age. So we prophesy in our behavior about a time of abundance that's going to be the kingdom of God. We also witness to the coming of marvelous news. All people are going to be happy and blessed by God. Let's read Deuteronomy 14. We'll read several verses from Deuteronomy 14 here at the conclusion of this sermonette. Verse 22. You shall surely, and the woman couldn't buy into this, you shall sure, truly or surely tithe all the increase of your seed 
that the field brings forth year by year. Tithing on the increase of the seed that your field brings forth, that takes some explanation, but probably you already understand that. And you shall eat, you shall eat. That's pretty strong language, isn't it? God wants us to, to be there, to do that, and to perform that witness for all of mankind. And so he called us and chose us to be his prophetic witnesses. You shall eat before the Lord your God in the place which he shall choose to place his name there, 10% of your corn, 10% of your wine, and 10% of your oil, and the firstlings of your herds and of your flocks, that you may learn. It's a learning process to, for us, but it's also a chance to be prophesying and witnessing to all of mankind. Learn so that as we do that, and we, as we experience the results of having done that, we will learn to fear the Lord God always. When we go to keep the feast, we are performing the responsibility of being God's prophetic witnesses. But that should bring us also great joy. Deuteronomy 14, verse 26. You shall bestow that money. You're talking about if, you, if, you, if it's too hard for you to carry 10% of your corn, 10% of your wine, 10% of your oil, and all of those things to the Feast of Tabernacles, especially if you're going to Estonia, that might be a little bit hard. Brian seems to do it every, every time but if it's gotten too hard for me, you shall bestow that money for whatsoever you, your soul, you can convert it to money, it's saying here, and I didn't include that in the verses. You shall bestow that money for whatsoever your soul earnestly desires to have. It says less is after here, but that's probably a little bit of um, less than perfect translation. For oxen, for sheep, for wine, strong drink, or whatsoever your soul desires, and you shall eat there before the Lord your God, and you shall rejoice, you and your household. 